So now we proceed to our final presentation of today. So uh, Anastasia Gagatsis, uh, he was born in Greece. Uh, in 2011, he obtained his MSc uh, at the University of Edinburgh, and now he works at Nireas. So please go ahead and keep us awake. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone. I realize everybody's tired. It's the last session of the day, so I'll try to be brief and to the point. Uh, I work along with uh, the co-authors in the NIREAS International Water Research Center in the University of Cyprus. And I'm going to present you a collab collaborative effort we've been doing in association also with uh, the Water Board of Limassol in developing an integrated solution for uh, managing uh, water leaks. So I'm going to uh, start with a brief uh, introduction and state the problem. So uh, water distribution networks are usually old, infrastructure, old underground infrastructure and they are degrading in several parts of the, uh, the world with a rapid uh, pace. Um, the damages in these um, uh, networks usually occur as uh, pipe deterioration, pipe degradation, uh, pipe failures, uh, bursts, rusting. And uh, the research uh, so far has been basically grouped in those three axes. The physical analysis, so um, researching the, the, active, the physical components of the networks. The uh, descriptive analysis, that is detecting patterns in the breaks, the pipe breaks. And the, uh, the modeling, the predictive analysis, using past data in order to, to project uh, the behavior of the system in the future. So, uh, water leaks uh, obviously result in, uh, in water losses and um, profit losses for uh, water distribution networks, for uh, water boards. Um, but uh, recording those incidents is a relatively recent practice for most networks, uh, spanning to around two decades. Um, and um, it's often the case when the type and uh, diameter and condition of the, of the pipes is actually unknown before uh, a problem occurs with these particular uh, pipes. And we believe that although um, it's not a, a water leaks are not uh, a perfect indicator of the uh, structural degradation in the system, th they are indeed a very good indicator uh, of it. So this is uh, the island of Cyprus and we are, we are based in the Republic of Cyprus on the south. Um, as I said, we are collaborating with the Limassol Water Board. Um, uh, the, uh, the amount of water loss we have, non-revenue water, um, reaches around 30% in the major uh, water distribution networks. And the records, uh, the data records we have of pipe failures begin at around 2003. But the data is not always complete. Uh, the, uh, the recording, the systematic recording of the data started when Dr. Uh, Christodoulou, who had worked previously in water distribution networks in New York, came to Cyprus um, in the civil engineers department. So uh, several uh, studies have been done, um, uh, both in the New York and uh, lately in the Cyprus uh, water distribution networks. Um, one, for example, is uh, the development of a, neuro a neurophasy decision support system, where basically um, we used, uh, they used artificial and artificial neural network uh, in order to um, using uh, traffic number of, number of previous breaks on a pipe, uh, length of the pipe, the material and the diameter of the pipe, uh, in order to, to model um, the behavior of uh, the system. And um, in terms of um, influence, the most influencing factor was found to be the number of previous breaks uh, followed by the diameter of a pipe. And uh, they used this uh, information in order to create uh, risk uh, maps of failures, risk of failure maps. So um, another argument, um, another reason we are monitoring, we're now monitoring uh, water leaks um, in a very uh, consistent manner is because um, in Cyprus we had a very serious drought uh, before 2008 for quite a few years that caused a significant water uh, shortage in, in water um, store, uh, stores. And so um, we, we even had to import water for Greece for a period. Now we are mainly, uh, our water mainly comes from desalination projects, but uh, at the time 
um, they, they decided to, to start an intermittent water supply um, in order to preserve water. But in reality, what this intermittent supply caused is um, a huge increase in the number of breaks of pipes in the system. So it was a bad call. Um, and all these reasons I mentioned has led us, and also because Cyprus is a very dry island, uh, not much water, uh, has led us to um, the decision to develop uh, a system to monitor the leaks and visualize them. So, um, where is the laser? Yeah. So here we have uh, our inputs and our database which uh, communicates with the application we're developing. Uh, we're also using this data to calculate performance indicators and detect partial temporal clusters of pipe breaks. And this data can then be used to produce reports or uh, to be projected in a GIS environment. So uh, our inputs, um, we have data coming from uh, customer complaints, the human sensor, as we mentioned today, and um, now we're, we're starting to uh, we're starting a project in order to use uh, automatic meter reading in order to detect leaks. So customer complaints, basically the customer calls the water distribution, the water board, uh, complaining about the problem, low pressure, no water. Uh, but while this is a good source of information, it often comes too late. For example, there's often the case when someone calls and says, my bill is very high. You know, and ironically, one of the co-authors, Savas, had a water bill of 2,500 euros. So you, you can see that um, this is, uh, is not a perfect source of information. Uh, so this information is then communicated to the water board. It's stored in the database as a pending uh, event, and then a technical team goes to uh, the site, um, investigates the problem, and um, sends a record of uh, the information on the problem, the type of pipe, the type of problem, and then the uh, sort of resolution that was used. So now what we're planning to do is also use these um, embedded uh, AMR uh, units, automatic meter reading units, which will be embedded on the consumer meters and send the readings of uh, water consumption in, um, in, in a central server. Uh, so this is being designed by Singla Derek Limited in co uh, cooperation with the University of Cyprus and the Limassol Water Distribution Network. This is communicated to the database, and then this information is used for, can be used for uh, leakage detection, either scheduled or on demand. And scheduled, I mean in the sort of like daily. So what we have here is, uh, this can be done in two ways. First, you can look at um, leaks of consumers, specific consumers, where you check for abnormal increases in water consumption. And then you can do that in a larger scale, in the district meter area, uh, area scale, where you basically uh, look at the flow of water at the single point of entry in each DMA, and you compare it to the sum of all the automatic meter readings. And this is the software we're developing. Here are the, uh, the DMA uh, warnings. Here are the, the automatic meter reading, readings. As you can see, we have the option to display this in a GIS to actually see where the location is. We can also create reports with them, export them in Excel, and so on. So again, this information then is sent to technicians who go and investigate the problem and record uh, what sort of problem it was, and um, the database is updated. So the application we're developing, it's in VBNet. And we're using it to store, detect, filter, export, and visualize water leaks. Um, so here you can see the, the interface for recording an incident. Um, as I said, I mentioned before, there are several op uh, options for analysis that we'll, uh, I will discuss now. And this information is, uh, this application is used to update the database and inform the database of any change. So um, the database has two components. The one is the data on the water leaks, which is um, con con um, recorded in a consistent manner. And uh, we have a type of damage, the characteristics of the pipe, the date, the address, the repair action, 
and the georeference spatial data we use for visualization and, and spatial processing, which is the, uh, the actual polygons, the DMAs, and the street network used for geocoding. So this is um, the, the processing part that we use for the data and the visualization. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, we, we geocode the data in order to have the actual location of the incidents. I think most of you here are familiar with uh, the process of geocoding, so it's, co it's going from an address to an actual coordinate. And um, we can also, we, we use the application to filter the data and create specified reports. So for example, if someone wants to see the, uh, the pipe breaks in water mains, he has the option to enter entering select, um, specific criteria and getting a specific report tailor, tailored to his needs. Um, we, we are then able to, sorry, um, we then decide to, to calculate some performance indicators for the network. So these are, for example, amount of, uh, of water breaks occurring by pipe kilometer in a DMA, or um, perhaps on, the, uh, on a street level, visualize it in a street level, so have a map of the streets of a city and see, have a color theme and see how many um, pipe breaks there are in each street. <coughs> And we can have um, maps like this one, thematic maps, or like um, this one, which was created manually, actually. Uh, so see, you can, uh, see, here, for example, we can see a comparison, uh, the difference between pipe incidents occurring um, before and during an intermittent water supply period year over year. So you can see, and that's very important, that location does matter. So you have DMAs which were heavily affected and we have others which were not really affected from the intermittent water supply. So uh, this leads to water distribution network, uh, network managers to specific, uh, um, to specific reasoning. Uh, we can also display the, as I said, uh, specific breaks. Unfortunately, you can't really see it here. The symbolization is not really good, but this is a pipe break. There are several more here. And another thing we did is because we decided that actually browsing and seeing where um, pipe breaks are concentrated is not a sufficient method because it relies too much on human observation. We, we decided to include some auto automated way to detect spatial clusters. <laughs> so uh, spatial temporal analysis techniques are, are used uh, heavily, in, for example, in epidemiology, crime pattern analysis for the detection of hotspots of crime. <laughs> Um, and a special cluster is basically an, an area with a higher concentration of uh, incidents compared to the rest of the study site. And a special temporal cluster can refer to a web of concentrated events in space and time compared to the rest of the study site for the specific study period we're using. So uh, there hasn't been too much work on, on this uh, aspect of water distribution networks. Not many analyses considered the actual location. Um, Gulter and Azemi were the first to report the detection of spatial clusters uh, in Winnipeg, Canada. And uh, most recently, De Oliveira from Carnegie Mellon uh, has done his uh, PhD on uh, the spatial analysis of uh, pipe breaks uh, in water mains. Uh, the, but the basic conclusion is that <coughs> location does matter. So you do get a, a tendency of the pipe breaks to cluster in space and time. So what we need from our algorithm, what we needed was the ability to, to detect areas of the network with higher densities of pipe, pipe failures, the ability to detect noise, that is, we don't want it to cluster all, all our incidents because some are, are obviously not clustered, but we wanted to, to classify them as noise. Uh, we wanted to be able to, to um, detect clusters of arbitrary shapes, so some classic uh, algorithms like partitioning algorithms are not suitable for our purpose. And we wanted you to detect clusters, obviously, without a priori knowledge of the number of clusters. Uh, we selected the DBSCAN algorithm devel developed by Esther Real. So you can see the arbitrary shape problem. I told you, uh, DBSCAN solves this. It does have the, um, the problem that it's heavily reliant on the, uh, the parameters used. So if, you, for example, you had a, a, a cluster here, which is much denser, 
it wouldn't classify it as a different density class. You'd have to do the analysis again with different parameters. Um, I don't know how much time do you have? Two minutes. So this is how the uh, this is how the DB scan uh, algorithm works. I'm not going to go into it because it's quite a famous algorithm. But uh, basically, what it does it classifies points as core points. So these are points which have a, a specific number of points in their neighborhood, like P here, and um, border points which belong to a cluster but are not core points themselves, and the noise points. So this is how these are calculated. And we are also considering time in this um, situation. So uh, we also uh, added an additional parameter to check if uh, an incident is within a time interval from another incident. And these are the uh, sort of results we get. These are, for example, water main pipe failures between 2008 and 2010. These are with using uh, different parameters in DBSCAN. So you go from larger to, uh, to denser clusters. And we can then study um, the reasons these uh, uh, clusters occurred. For example, this was done by construction work here. And these, uh, we had five pipe failures caused by tree roots. During these periods, the, uh, the reason was unknown, but it's very likely that it was also uh, caused by tree roots based on this observation. So uh, these are, for example, cases of spatial temporal clusters. So we are talking about pipe breaks which are linked, not only in space, but also in time, uh, happen consequently. Uh, these uh, happen because of uh, pressure imbalance. Uh, this is another one done by construction work. And um, uh, thank you very much. That was my presentation. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Are there any questions? Well, then I have a question. Or Yeah, OK. Are you first? Yeah, I'm intrigued by the uh, AMR at the consumers. Uh, I mean, generally in Western Europe, uh, installation of AMRs at consumers' points is considered economically not viable. Uh, can you comment on that aspect of it? Um, yeah. Um, the first thing, I'm not sure how, how much I'm allowed to talk because this is developed by a company as well, so how much information I'm allowed to, to give you. But uh, the first point is that the device we're using is embedded on the meter, so we don't change the meter, and this is a much cheaper option. And the, the second point is that uh, I would understand that for a network, for example, like here in Holland, you have so much water. In Cyprus, we don't have much water, so we need to preserve it. And also, uh, water in Cyprus is um, now heavily, it comes from, uh, I think 70% comes from desalination plants. And producing water from desalination plants costs a lot. But additionally, the, the water boards did already plan in Cyprus to install in the future to have a smart reading a process. We're just using this in order to detect leaks. Yeah. Okay, then I have a question because uh, now you get a lot of information about uh, when pipe uh, leaks uh, occur, breaks occur. Uh, are you also going to use this information now uh, for your asset management? So to see, to improve your strategy of um, maintenance in your system? For instance, if you know you can uh, expect that the pipe will burst within a certain period? Yeah, I mean, for, uh, first of all, they do change the structure of the DMAs throughout the years. But this work is not actually done by us. We, we're a research team working with the water boards. So what we do is we communicate this information with the water board, we write scientific papers, we have meetings with them, and they decide on the policies they will take. We can't dictate what they will do with their system. But um, as I said, they do develop the system. It's, I think that uh, the Limassol system is actually a quite good one. They're very thorough in, in the work uh, they do there. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? No? OK, thank you. So this was the final presentation of today. Uh, we meet at 15 past 6 below in the lobby. And from there on, we go by boat. OK, see you there.